to our second um, second fragments of silicon review of the week. We have an audio problem right, again. Welcome. There was just a momentary echo thing. I think we're okay. All right. Seems like you want to check the screen. Yeah. All right. So, the, um, up up here yeah. is um, Blossom Tales: The Sleeping King. Uh, you know, I, I'm I'm guessing it's because um, surprisingly there aren't that many Zelda clones in the world. Or at least not enough to give like the term Zelda clone its own genre. Yeah, adventure, adventure game, game is used for that for sometimes, that. but it's a yeah. little bit broader. Yeah, adventure I'm game is an a echo of myself. Yeah, adventure game. I, I remember pe well. People called uh, Zelda an adventure game because that's what Nintendo called it back in the day, back when they you know like back when they had listings on the boxes and stuff. They called Zelda an adventure game, and you know, and, and there's been a side, ra you know, th th there's been a raging topic about whether or not Zelda's an RPG or or not, and you know, the answer is usually fun. the answer is usually no because uh, you don't deal with like statistics and experience points for the most part. Yes, yes, Zelda two exists. Um, point is. Uh, you know, Zelda clones do exist, or Zelda likes um, do exist, have existed for decades. You know, going all the way back to, say, Crystallis, Golden Axe Warrior, and not his favorite, Newtopia. I know he gets pissed when, he, when people call it a Zelda clone, but it's a Zelda clone. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like... You know, as opposed to, say, like, you know, how... You know, back in the day, we called uh, FPSs Doom clones, or you know, open world games were at one point called GTA clones. You know, there were there was enough proliferation there to uh, give it its own genre or subgenre. I don't think that's ever been the case with Zelda. And I'm yeah, like, this is very specifically a clone of somewhere between Link to the Past and Link's Awakening. I'd say aesthetically, it's um, uh, most towards Link to the Past. Like, I mean, you know, for those who are watching the video version, uh, you can see the footage. Um, and, yeah, it looks like A Link to the Past. Yeah. It, it looks so, so much like Link to the Past. Uh, except that you are playing, you know, um, uh, yeah, you are playing a female knight. Like... Um, uh, since, since we skipped over this in the startup here, the yeah. setup to this game is kind of interesting. It lampshades right away that, hey, uh, this is a lot like a Zelda game, but uh, this is a story being, a bedtime story basically being told by an old man to his two granddaughters mm -hmm. who are sick of hearing the Zelda stories, basically. Right. So this is the story about a princess named Lily from the, or a female knight named Lily from the Blossom Kingdom. Mm hmm and like and uh, she has to deal with what the subtitle says a sleeping king uh, he's not asleep at the beginning but you know it, shortly after the prologue um, his very obviously evil brother um, you know unleashes his heat along in the running evil plan and puts the king to sleep and then goes and fucks off somewhere for most of the game mm-hmm uh -huh. <laughs> that makes him a lot more like Ganon than it should. Just ask me no wizard. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, he's a, he's a very large wizard, too. The king is a normal-sized dude, but... Uh, yeah. Crocus we, is, uh, is is uh, twice the size of an abnormal person. Something <laughs> like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, everything in this game has flower names, practically. Yeah, and your job is to recover the... Um, three sacred ingredients in order to make the potion. That um, will wake the king up. Yeah, so I'll, I'll note in terms of size, um, it's a it's a good, like, it'd be comparable to the first part of a Zelda game. Yeah, this is a five dungeon game. Yeah. It's the intro dungeon, then the three ingredient dungeons, and then the final dungeon. Yeah, it's like or, you know, it's the size of, say, Minish Cap or um, Majora's Mask. 
Although there, there's a good amount of side stuff to do, though. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it, it's one of the Zeldas that uh, you know it it doesn't have all that many dungeons, but there's a lot to do. Like, yeah. um, there's a lot of exploration. There's a lot of um, secret stuff. Um, that's the reason why I actually hadn't completed the game uh, about ten hours in. But uh, you know, th- there's a lot of secrets. And it's not just, oh, more coins. Um, you can find secret items. Like, there are the four magic spells. Well, I've only yeah, found... You have, to, you have to find the magic spells. You have to find lost scrolls and return them to that to that lady. And by have to, I mean as an optional quest. Yeah, there's a lot of optional quests here. There are so, archaeologists that you can meet who are in caves <laughs> with treasures. Yeah. Uh, like, right now, I'm... I'm... I was like doing a uh, magician puzzle the other day and uh, i'll be honest i think the uh, like i think the puzzles are um kind of uneven a little bit i think the actual difficulty of the game is a little bit uneven too zelda games generally do not throw whiz robes in you in the first dungeon yeah and it's also like um there were rooms, like, say, in the second dungeon that were way too packed with enemies. Yes. <laughs> Which, sometimes chucking a bomb into the room can take out a lot of them at once, but sometimes that blows you up, too, so... Uh, Petty fan, you need to use bombs on golems. Mm-hmm. If he can hear us. Mm-hmm. Like, well, I guess you'll fi- find out eventually. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that's one of the things, you know, like, um, some weapons work um, better on enemies than others but okay another st- problem- yeah one of the problems is your sword kind of sucks against everything it, yeah i mean it's nice sure. that you get the three slash combo and the spin attack and there's actually beyond the spin charge attack there's another blow to that combo where you kind of jump forward and slam the sword forward but the sword is not very long and it's risky to use because you might get hit and it's not that fast it's better it to throw it out in front of you and just run into something with it than actually yeah. slain it. My biggest problem is just how weak the sword is mm-hmm. compared to everything else. Like um, using uh, bombs or arrows or e- even the boomerang, um, they do a lot more actual damage than the sword. Yeah, I killed now, the final you, boss with the boomerang. <laughs> yeah. Now, you do get power ups. Like, um, you will get a proper. Um, you will get a powered up version of the um, uh, of the ra- what they call the roundhouse, and I think the um, last power up is a sword beam. Yep. Yeah, but I've heard that even then, your other weapons are mostly more powerful. Pretty much. The Pretty sword much. beam. The sword beam has the same uh, has you know, the same drawback. As, and as admittedly, this was kind of a problem in the Legend of Zelda too. Right. In Link, to the, in Link to the Past, because in Link to the Past, like once you get the hook shot, it's generally superior to the sword for most purposes until you get at least the red sword. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, uh, but the thing is, like, you use the uh, shit like the hook, hook shot or the boomerang to stun enemies, then take them out with the sword. Like, no, the hook shot kills things. Some things, yes, but uh, some things it's stunned. Like, ah, true. You know, like it wasn't a cons- like. I couldn't say I ever consistently used the hook shot or the boomerang as my main weapon in a Zelda game. Yeah, I, I did. I, I guess that's di- like <laughs> and you know, the bow too. Actually, in, in Link to the Past, because their arrows are pretty easy to and get. I get. And this is actually a, a thing that was um, mitigated further in the 3D games, like mm-hmm. um, when it came to you uh, fighting bosses, like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you you use the item uh, of the dungeon against a boss, but you always did the finishing blows with the swords. Mm-hmm. That was less of a thing in the in the two D Zelda's. I'll give them uh, that. Minish Cap did that pretty hardcore. I said yeah. less of a thing. Right. Yeah. So. But yeah, I know what you mean. I, I, I'm like, the the point is, uh, it's close to Zelda, but. You know, no Zelda clone I've ever played has ever gotten it, like, completely, you know, what Zelda did. For- I think that might be one of the game's biggest weaknesses, is that it is very specifically saying, hey, this is a lot like a Zelda game, 
and that's inviting more direct comparison to the quality of Zelda games. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which this does not... Qu- I mean, I think this is a good game, but it's not as good as Link to the Past or Link's Awakening because those are both masterpieces. No, uh, of course not. Like, I, I, I'm not going to expect an indie... Um, an indie Zelda clone to surpass, you know, like Link to the Past or um, really any of the Zelda, uh, any of, uh, I'd say a large chunk of the Zelda games, like I do expect uh, surpassing of, say, Zelda 1, Mm -hmm. if only because, yeah, I'm one of the people who think that Zelda 1 hasn't aged all that well. Oh, I'm with you there. Yeah. Yeah. I have never made it very far in Zelda 1 because I always die horribly. I mean, I can play Zelda one, but you know, I—that's because I played it when it was new. Like, it—it it is a game that, like, I—I I do think was eclipsed by its sequels. I know not everyone feels that way. Like, they like the openness of Zelda one, but just in terms of mechanics and everything. Um, grumble, grumble. Yes, yes, that. <laughs> um, but Eastmost that, Peninsula holds the secret. So as it turns out, they actually corrected the, uh, that um, typo in the uh, NES Classics version of the game. Mm. Oh. Well. I, I swear to God. Um, but yeah. So, uh, you know, every part of this game, not just um, the aesthetics, but the sound, the play style, the everything is invoking of Zelda. There are a few interesting things you get from the fact that it is a bedtime story. All of the narration and tutorials are in the form of the grandfather actually saying the stuff. Yeah, I did like that um, touch. And I did and like there are that- there are is at least one time that I got to, and I assume there are some others where uh the two girls will pipe up and each will make a uh uh, it was Fishing. when you were going to, going to the first town. She'll say one of them said, "Oh, you have to fight," and she had to fight golems, right? And the other one no, said, "No, she had to fight archers." And then you get to choose whether to fight golems or archers in that area. Yeah, that happens a few more times later on. Mm-hmm. So I, like I thought th- I thought that was a nice touch to the fact that it is a story being told. Yeah, it, I honestly think that's the you know that's probably the thing it does most to distinguish itself from you know the actual Zelda games. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm reminded by what's on screen. Another thing to do is there are these tree spirits that most of them have been corrupted by Crocus's evil magic, and you have to beat the shit out of them, and then they become good again. Yeah. Um, now, in terms of uh, item selection, uh, it's more actually Link's Awakening than Link to the Past, if only because what you can do is you can switch your shield out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have a fixed sword button, but your shield and your other thing are fully freely swappable between different items. In the Game Boy games, you could actually swap out your sword, too, and frequently had to for, like, Pegasus boots plus Rock's feather to jump over long gaps. Oh, and that is another thing this game needed. A dash feature. Uh, Yeah, you are pretty slow. Like, holy fuck. I was expecting, like, you know, a Pegasus boots analog to show up, you know, around the first uh, first major dungeon, and now, granted, I haven't gotten every item in the game, and it could still be there, but yeah. If, if it's available, it's way near the end, which yeah. is not where you want something that is kind of a quality of life upgrade. Yeah, Twilight, is there a dash feature? Isn't you actually- yeah, yeah you, there's, you get these uh, magic shoes later on, but it's, it's a dash, literally a dash. You, just go, you shoot forward a little bit, and that's about it. It helps some, but... Yeah. Okay. Well, once again, the, the Pegasus boots, you know, you could dash, like, the whole way. Yeah, and they, ga- and they gave you those after the first major Light World dungeon in Link to the Past, because See, they it's, that you're going to want that. It's little things like that that really fractured my enjoyment of the game. It's, um, another good example is the bow. So, um, the way you use the bow is, um... You have you, to hold it for a second to draw the string back before you can release it to fire the arrow. Right. Mm-hmm. And I get what they were going for there. That's actually a more realistic way of doing... You know, that's actually how bows work. 
and it makes the bow a little bit less usable as your primary weapon because it takes a second. Otherwise, I probably would have ditched the sword completely for the bow. Well, it's like, uh, well, you can't completely ditch your uh, sword because um, this game handles sub weapons like um, uh, a link between worlds. You know, um, you don't. Yeah, get... I know. You you need them in some circumstances, but I would have no, liked. I mean, used no, 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 no. Let me finish. Oh. You know, um, it handles it in magic meter style, not right. in uh, in an ammo sense, like Link to the Past. Yeah, I noticed that. You know, so there are um, magic pieces you can get as well as hard pieces. Yeah, it's like, um, well, um, the, it's called your stamina meter, but you know, um, uh, like bombs. And you know, all the sub weapons, even like the shield and such, are all tied to this meter. And you know, the the more you use your bombs, the more you use your arrows, the you know it, it drains uh, until you can't use it. And you know, it, it'll go up pretty quickly, actually. But in a room with a lot of enemies, you're probably still going to be using your sword just through, um, sh just because you don't. You can't use more than one bomb at that point. Right. Yeah. And like I said, that's the way it was in Link Between Worlds. You know, I'm... You know, it's like... I'm honestly not sure if it's a better way than an ammo system, but it's, you know, it's certainly a more modern take, if only because that's what a more modern Zelda is doing. Like... And it's and good. It, it keeps the uh, drops down slightly, because... Yeah. There are enough of those between the money and the feathers and the health refills. Yes. And mushrooms or whatever for side quests. I'm like, and um, game just I think Penny Pan's having some trouble with the game. The game just crashed on me. Oh boy, that's uh, not great. Is it well, just because of so much stuff going on? I didn't have any problems with it, but... No clue. I'll try, well, uh, try reloading it. Um, anyway, uh, so, uh, you know, another problem with the combat is, okay, this is something that I haven't seen any of the Zelda clone get right correctly. It's, um, so Link always had his shield out. Mm -hmm. In you know, Link to the Past, in the Game Boy games, it was a switchable. Yes, but the, 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 there was a reason for that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, since this game is going after, um... It's most resembling Link to the Past. Mm -hmm. You know, it has a dedicated shield button, but uh, I I'm like, Link had his shield out at all times, so blocking his enemies in combat was a less of a hassle. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, with the, with um, Link's Awakening and the Oracles games, um, you had to be a lot more strategic about that. And, I think it's just, doing that on purpose. Uh, it, possibly, but... I, I don't know. There's like periods where you have to like strafe across a uh, yeah yeah thing shooting at you. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just think Zelda did it better with the, with that approach. Yeah, Zelda did also frequently include enemies that will charge at you that you have to shield and then they'll bounce over, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. which I did not run into any of. Yeah, I'm like I I, I will say I think it handled it better than say um, the It'll Do series. Like, I, I wasn't a big fan of the combat there because, well, neither game, neither one of those games provided a shield at all. Mm -hmm. You like, just have to dodge and you're not super fast. Yeah, the second game in that um, did provide a uh, dodge roll, which you actually which actually, actually factored in heavily into the combat. And I don't think Naka's uh, picked up on it, at least not where he is in the gameplay series. Though that's still pretty early, so... Yeah, like... But anyway, yeah, I will say, yeah, the combat here and the puzzles and everything are a lot more Zelda um, than any than what It'll Do did. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, if you've been watching the footage or, you know, like, we, like where Petty Fan is right now, this dungeon looks something right out of a Zelda game. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know. So again, they did very. They they are, were up front in the game about that the fact that that's what they were going for. Yeah, I, I, I don't like. I don't think they could help but be up front about that. Yeah. Um. You know, 
given everything. Uh, let's see. You know, uh, the soundtrack one is also pretty evocative of uh, of Zelda, which mm-hmm. is a good thing usually. Yes, I mean, it's not, once again, it's not going to be as memorable as say a Koji Kondo um, selection. Mm-hmm. You know. <laughs> But, you know, it gets the job done well enough. Also worth yeah. noting, um, the soundtrack is available um, alongside the game itself. I'm like, uh, that is to say, if you buy the game, you will get the soundtrack for free. Mm-hmm. Like, and uh, in terms of pricing, um, the game is currently $15. Like, mm, I'm like, I feel like that's not bad. Could be a little less. Yeah, I'm like, uh, in the ballpark, I'll say. I'm like, yeah. I think, yeah. It, it, it's like, in terms of content, maybe like it may, it's maybe on the short side, especially if you um don't do the side stuff. Like yeah, they say, they say the game is supposed to be about 15 hours, so... Yeah, I'm like... Uh, there's definitely a, a significant chunk of game in between dungeons. But, you know, it's not that long. Like like I said, you know, if this were a Zelda game, this would be one of the portable titles. Granted, you, you would pay a lot more for, uh, for a Zelda game, but, you know... Uh, I, once again, you know, the quality is comparable to Zelda, but it, it, it's certainly no Zelda title. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, don't take that as an insult. It's just, you know, the, you know, the Zelda series have a level of polish and um, pristine that, you know, not a lot of series can match. Especially not small studio indie games. Right. I mean, you know, this is one of Nintendo's core franchises. You know, even the um, like the, the more minor portable versions that they used to outsource still had, you know, a lot of, of oversight from Nintendo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, uh, I'll once again I'll say this is a, you know this is a very solid game um, that homages its uh, its inspiration pretty well. Just don't go in expecting, you know. Yeah, the Zelda controls game. are slightly less snappy. Yeah. The state, the level, the level design. One of the things I noticed: the dungeons are very on the linear side, which is more common in later Zeldas, where there's more spectacle to pull, pull up for it. Like mm-hmm. not literally walking in a line, but like I've if I've been watching the Boss Keys series on YouTube about dungeon design in Zelda games, and this is very much. There's really only one thing you can do most of the time. Mm-hmm. Like usually, there's only one door you can go through. If there's another door, it's usually locked, and you have to go through the first door to get the key to the second door. So if you like really exploratory dungeons, like Link to the Link, Link to the Past, and Link's Awakening had really interesting and exploratory dungeons where you could do things in a lot of different orders. This doesn't have that as much. I don't think. If it does, it's more in the later dungeons. And that really is about the same. So yeah, that that I mean, I don't think that's bad. It's just something to know what to expect. Well, Twilight, there. what are your thought process here since you actually um, beat the game? Um, it's it does what I was aiming for a whale, and um. No, I did have my problems with it, such as enemy placement and such, but I enjoyed it for the most part. Yeah, um, I did too. Yeah, it, it did well what I was aiming for. Uh, as say, if I were to give it a score, Seven out of ten, maybe. Hmm. Yeah, that's about where I put it. Yeah, seven, maybe seven and a half, depending on how you feel about this kind of game. Yeah, I'd recommend checking it out 
if if not if not else on sale. If if it, yeah. if it ever goes on sale, I definitely recommend checking it out. I agree. Right, um, so I guess that's about it from you, Twilight? Mm, pretty much. Okay. I really didn't have that long to really mold over the entirety of the thing. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Uh, so I think that's about everything. Uh, it's a solid enough game on its own. Um, maybe if it gets like a sequel or two, it'll, you know... It, it will... It might improve. Um, yeah. <laughs> It'll improve. But, like, like I said, I, I just... Even if they made a hundred of these, I don't see it, like, being on the level of, say, a Zelda series. Once again, that, that's just more how... Uh, that's just more the resources and the uh, manpower of Nintendo versus any indie team. And Nintendo has Nintendo had, had years, years to affect it. it. I mean, now, now maybe someone, somebody out there will, you know, will do that. You, you never know, but uh, I, I really haven't seen it. You know, not even out of the more professional Zelda clones. Outside of like a few exceptions, when you know, like Link to the Past hadn't hit yet. I mean, you got the Newtopia games, and uh, Crystallis is a favorite of mine. Like that—that that was actually a lot more advanced than say what Zelda One, and that was on the same system too. Mm-hmm. But you know, like, th- there's a reason why say Link to the Past is and uh, is considered to be like even among Nintendo's classics, a classic. Yeah. Um, but still worth a purchase. Um, uh, Enjoyed Zelda. The, the... You know, it's like I, I like personally. I, I you know I, I I hope it like comes to the Switch. Um, or the 3DS, but, but probably the Switch. Like, mm-hmm. because th- th- this is also the kind of game I would enjoy much more on a portable device. You know, considering how, mu- how much, you know, in spite of its aesthetical design, its mechanics are much more in line with the portable Zelda's. Um, yeah. So, all right, um, that'll about do it for the uh, review session. Uh, yeah. In the week ahead... Uh, let's see. On on uh, we only have one uh, M- uh, one fragment show this week. No, no Tuesday uh, interviews slated. So on the Alpha episode, we've got um, Stephen Kick of Night Dive Studios returning once again. Um, catch up with him. You know now that um, Turok Two is done, and um, they've actually put out a couple other classic games. Uh, see how. You know, basically see how uh, everything's going there and uh, things and stuff. So, not sure if we're going to get any new game announcements out of that, major or minor. Like, all depends on what he can uh, talk about. But we are post GDC, so that'll be a help. Uh, let's see, MSP. I don't think we have a guest slated. But we do have. I, I do believe we have an episode planned. We don't have a guest uh, yeah. until May at this point. Yeah, well, it's also um, Max's been increasingly talking about getting a second job and you know potentially moving the show and all that stuff. And uh, I don't know. La- last time he did the two do- job thing, the show went on hiatus. So, uh, you know, just putting that out there. Anyway, um, and. So next week, so next week our review slate looks like this. We will be reviewing old time hockey, of which we did an interview, you know, this past Wednesday. I'm still and disappointed we'll, that that isn't actually a fighting game. Yeah, <laughs> it sort of is, but <laughs> you know, yeah, not a one on one fighter. Well, 
you there is one on one fighting, but that's between um, goons. Anyway, um, and our second game will be Shovel Knight, Spectre of Torments. Oh man, is that going to be out already? Um, it's it, it's, it's already uh, out. It's already out. Like, hmm. which is why it's on the review slate. <laughs> I'm like, and yeah, if you haven't picked up, uh, if you didn't pick up Shovel Knight before, it's actually going to be um, more expensive now. More on that next week. 